effects of E. We've heard a lot about E, as known as the nature constant or the base of nature logarithm, but we haven't looked deeply into it. What is E exactly? Here are some interesting facts about E. First is a vivid example of interest related to E. If I put one pound in my bank account, and the manager told me the interest rate of the bank is a hundred percent per year, which means I can get two pounds next year. However, if the manager told me that the bank will pay the interest in six months, but with the same annual interest rate. That is to say, at the beginning of the year, if I make a deposit of one pound and will get fifty pence as interest after half a year, so six months later I'll have one pound fifty as initial deposit. By the end of the second half year, I'll have two pounds twenty-five in total, including seventy-five pence as interest of the second half year. All that is being said can be expressed in this function. Then the crazy bank decides to pay the interest in four months. Then I can get the money around two point three seven o three seven pounds at the end of the year. Now a question arises: If the bank pays the interest by day or even by second, will I become incredibly rich when I only save one pound originally? However, it is impossible. Let the times of the bank paying interest in the year be n, then the growth function will be like this, and when n goes to infinity, the result will be two point seven one eight two eight one eight two eight roughly. Since people can't write it down accurately, this number is defined as the Euler's number e, because the Swiss mathematician Euler found this number first. Next feature. Is the logarithmic spiral. When we want to describe something is growing really fast, we can say it's growing exponentially. As you can see in the graph of the exponential function, it increases massively when x is getting bigger. Notice that the graph is based on Cartesian coordinates, which is the most common coordinate we've seen. There is also another coordinate system that is used in mathematics frequently, the polar coordinate system, in which each point on a plane is determined by a distance r from a reference point O, and an angle theta from a reference direction, usually horizontal. If we convert e to the x from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates, what will happen to its graph? It will turn into a spiral-shaped curve whose name is logarithmic spiral. The general form of this spiral is r equal to a times e to the b theta, where a and b are constants. In fact, we can find this spiral almost everywhere in the real world. Herbs, flowers, snails, shells, leaves, a galaxy, waves, tornadoes, and even in the painting Mona Lisa. So, what's the secret behind this spiral? If we look closely into the curve, we will find that it is self-similar. Namely, all of these branches have the same shape and rotating angle. If we draw the tangent lines of the spiral, which are shown in red in the picture. Notice the radial line started from the original point is in black. Then the angle between any pair of these two lines will be the same, and since it's self-similar, the inner spiral will have the same property. That is the reason why there are so many logarithmic spirals in the real world, because upon the impacts from the outside. An object will move in an equiangular path instead of a straight line path, and here's an instance. The old saying, "Like a moth to a flame," describes someone with an irresistible yet self-destructive attraction. 
There are several theories as to why the insects make their suicidal flight towards the burning candles and artificial lights. One of the hypotheses is related to the logarithmic spiral mentioned above. When insects fly at night, they use light sources such as the moon for navigation. To fly in a straight line, they only need to keep a constant angle at which the rays from the brightest object in the sky which strike their eyes. When there is no artificial light, there is no problem because the beams from the sun or the moon are parallel. The situation changed when humans introduced other light sources. If a moth keeps a constant angle theta to the radio beams of an electric light, it will approach the light on a spiral. When the motion is in a plane, the trajectory is a logarithmic spiral, which can also be confirmed by observations. If the angle is acute to start with, as shown in the diagram, then the moth follows the spiral inward to its death. If the angle is obtuse, the moth is lucky and traces the spiral outwards, away from the flame. If the angle is exactly 90 degrees, then the moth flies around and around in a circle. So that's a basic introduction into E. Thank you for watching.